one person from McLife. It was something huge. It was like huge decision. We're making history right now. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. The place actually, it doesn't matter. People, what really Absolutely. matters. Yeah. I hate this word. Say it's it again. It's a hard one. Authenticity. So when you speak English, you can talk to the world. Hello, hello, Michael, and привет, uh, друзі. I also speak and Ukrainian and English as well. And you know what? I also feel comfortable when I speak English, even though it, it's not my native language. Yeah, you speak like a. Like comfortably, like it's your native language, I would say. I, I mean, I, I love this language. I really don't care about the mistakes I do or like if I don't, if I can't remember words or something. So I'm not trying to be perfect. English for me is just a tool for communication mm -hmm. because when you speak English, you can talk to the world. Like you can talk to everybody, anybody, and that's the most important. We're sure. here in Krakow. I want to ask about language here, about a lot of things. So first, like, how long have you been living here? Oh my, it's been, I guess, uh, almost a year. Yeah, so I came uh, here like in October, I guess. Yeah, so October. almost like a year. Okay, where were you before? Like, uh, and like when war started, like where were you and how, how's your movement? As usually I was abroad. Huh. I like traveling a lot. And uh, usually all the winters I spend in Ukraine, I go to Carpathian mountains and try snowboarding. I'm so bad at it, but still, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying snowboarding, I'm trying. And um, yeah, so, and that's uh, the, the year of 2022, right? Was actually an exceptional one. So, because I decided to spend the winter in uh, Cyprus. Okay. And uh, actually that was my like first, uh, first point of the trip. Mm -hmm. And then the, I was like supposed to go to Ukraine, but um, like because of the obvious reasons, I couldn't go. After that, I kind of appeared in France, you know, <laughs> just, just popped up in just France. Like popped up, really, <laughs> because like the the friends of my friends or relatives, I don't know. They just said, "Hey, come to France. We have like place for you to stay, just to figure out the things. Mm -hmm. Probably you need to take your parents, you know, because that was actually well, I was terrified. That I wanted like to take my parents from Mykolaiv, so I'm originally from okay. Mykolaiv, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and I thought that maybe I'm gonna just you know have my station in Europe mm -hmm. just in case if things uh, got worse so I have to take my parents you know to Europe and but they didn't want to leave you know I guess wow. uh, so many Ukrainians would understand me parents when they have their own house you know animals and everything they can just leave it home is something special right of course it yeah. is and uh, for our four generations uh, of our parents it's like it's crucial thing to mm -hmm. have, you know, like it's their own house, it's their own place, it's their own territory, why they should live it. Yeah, especially being forced to. So mm -hmm. you've been here for about a year right. um, in Poland and had you traveled to Poland much before? Actually, nope. I've never thought about it. <laughs> I mean, like Poland not, wasn't my point to mm -hmm. go to. Mm -hmm. So um, I was dreaming about France and mm -hmm. actually I kind of achieved this goal so I also lived in France for six months I guess actually it's like I'm living currently in Krakow it's actually a nice place I love this place because it reminds me about Lviv yeah and I used to live in Lviv that was uh, the city of choice okay know? and um, and yeah Krakow just reminds me about uh, hometown a lot so yeah. I just decided to like stay here to figure my things out. The language is quite similar. You're obviously multilingual. Um, and do you learn Polish or how's what's language like here? I knew that question was coming. <laughs> because Polish is actually similar to like Ukrainian, I can understand mm -hmm. when people speak Polish, but I am kind of um, I'm a bit ashamed to speak Polish because I'm not fluent in speaking. Mm -hmm. So I, I understand, but I'm not fluent in speaking. So for me, it's better to speak English. And I'm actually very happy that people here, mostly they speak English. And I really feel comfortable uh, just staying here mm -hmm. because of the language. Because, well, <laughs> language, it's, it's important. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter where you are. You can be isolated everywhere if you don't speak a language. Yeah. Right? Um, so th English is the most useful, obviously, and I think there's no pressure to learn another mm -hmm. language, um, but it helps to know. So I think that's why there's not like pressure for you to really be forced. Whereas if you lived in like Spain or France, maybe they'd be different. 
French people there uh, have really different um, kind of opinion about English, so they obviously speak French, mm -hmm. and they actually they like don't know like they are not fluent in English or they just don't want to speak English yeah. because of the story, you know, <laughs> uh, history. Yeah. So. And that's why they really prefer French. So if you're gonna talk to them in English, they're gonna kind of understand you, and but answer you in French. Right. It's but really interesting. It's interesting, and I guess it's a really great point. Um, okay, so language is similar between Polish language and Ukrainian. It's actually quite similar. Right. I wanted to ask you if you find the mentality similar. As I said, like it really the community reminds me about Lviv. So mm -hmm. when I used to, okay, I used to live in uh, Mykolaiv, I was born there, mm -hmm. and then I lived, um, I've lived in Kiev for a couple of years. I don't know, unfortunately, I couldn't find a right community for myself living in Kiev, so I mm -hmm. just decided to change the place and go to Lviv. And I found Lviv as really place for, I don't know, growing some connections, yeah. finding people. I started to get, um, to mm -hmm. make some friends. And uh, I would say that being in Krakow, it kind of the same as like being in Lviv. Of course, there is like difference for sure, but I don't know how to say like, what is this difference, you know? Um, well, let's say that, for example, Polish people like young generation, they are not, thanks God, they're not experiencing the war, right? Right. So it doesn't like affect them. Yeah. And they, of course, they live there wealthy life yeah as see? they should and they have they their can. like open-minded mindset mm -hmm. about everything about cultures about like people this can be a difference you see so maybe right. somehow our community not very open-minded mm -hmm. but we also can understand them because like look we've been uh in the war for like since 2014 right, right? almost it's 10 years yeah, it affects people a lot, and of course we are thinking about our like survival, you know, the survival of our um, nation, not like about the mindset and uh, yeah. everything. So it's actually it's important to understand. Can I ask you a question? Sure, about, yeah? for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about that. How are you feeling being in Ukraine? I mean, you're an American, right? Yeah. You came to Ukraine, and how are you feeling here? How how comfortable you are, you know, right. with this community? Yeah, so it's a cool question, and this is like one of the first times I get to answer it in English because I get asked this, but it's in Ukrainian, and so well, it's good that you're gonna have an answer. Yeah, I can actually express myself. What you mentioned about like your family in Mykolaiv and like this feeling of home, because mm -hmm. I moved to Ukraine in 2019, so and then during COVID I was there the entire year, so I was there before war, like a couple years before war, and I had already built a life there and felt really like it's my home and that's where I'm settling down. I'm also like you though, every winter I'm abroad and when war started I was in Cancun, Mexico. Oh nice! <laughs> yeah, <Hot. laughs> I was there with my music manager, he's from Lutsk, so he, we always travel. Um, crazy story with that, he wound up in America as a refugee living with my parents in Las Vegas and I spend time in Lutsk um, with his mother but so we were both abroad, but like two weeks after war started, I came back, which mm. is also like kind of crazy. I had a lot of my things, uh, I had an apartment, and so I had this like belonging to come back. And uh, I came back, I came back to Lviv where I was mm. living. Yeah, maybe, is it scary? Yeah, I, I, it could be. I mean, I've had some instances that I guess could give you anxiety, but mm -hmm. it's like, I'd much rather be there than be like displaced. A lot of my expat friends, when war started, they left and um, they still haven't returned. And by mm -hmm. now, you know, it's been a year and a half, like they've now built lives elsewhere around Europe, which is actually great. For me, I didn't, I didn't really build anything else. I just went back to Ukraine and kept mm -hmm. going there. Okay, I'm just gonna stick it out, but be very cautious. When were you in Kyiv? Like, did you study there? No, actually, when I graduated at the university, uh, right after that, I went to Kyiv. Okay, so, so it was like after university, so you're in your 20s? Yeah, 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 I was like 20s, I guess. So it wasn't like really intentionally, so I wasn't really conscious about that, mm -hmm. you know? But I was like, why not? Well, that time I've um, been participating in so many different events in my university. I thought about to become a TV host. Yeah, right? I could totally see you doing that. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm doing YouTube now and I actually feel quite comfortable with this yeah. i guess it's another version of tv host more like 
uh, updated. Yeah, one. for sure. You but, create your own. But still, I, I would like to try, you know? Yeah, <laughs> options open. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Um, and uh, I went to Kiev and stayed there for a couple of years. I worked in a different place. I worked as a creative uh, editor, I guess, for one uh, Ukrainian media holding. Okay. So I was like creating um, briefs for like, I was creating adverti advertisements for mm -hmm. companies, mm -hmm. different companies. And uh, I've got really nice experience of like living in Kiev, but I feel I felt really very limited like okay. in there it was really huge city and I was brought in like really small town you know Nikolai mm -hmm. and um, and I well let's say um, and I also had traveled to the US before yeah that's right oh so you had an idea of like what else is out there yes of. so I knew other scenarios yeah. of communication community relationships and everything so and I kind of compared um, compare those communities, you know, um, like American communities, uh, community and uh, being in Kiev, for example, it was a bit different than what, yeah. what I really imagined. I don't say it's bad. No, it's good. But it just not. I realized it's just not for me. I was like, I have to search for another place, I guess, because I love Ukraine and uh, I love traveling as well. Right. So, Seems so. I'm really like into traveling a lot. And uh, then I just decided to go to Lviv just to try it one more time because when I was 14, I traveled with my dad. That was my first and only trip with my dad, I guess. Hmm. <laughs> um, but it was a nice trip. And uh, I then I decided when I was like 14, I guess I decided I think I should move to Lviv. Wow. You know, it's really nice place. And uh, for me, from person from Mikolaev, it was something huge. It was like huge decision. Like you should what? You should drop everything and just go to Lviv? Like how is that? Yeah. Like, how does it it's look? It's far too from like geographically. I would say like 18 hours Wow. by train. That's crazy. <laughs> and almost a day by a car. So um, I, yeah, I went to Lviv and uh, I just said like, I'm going to give myself a little bit of time, mm -hmm. stay there and to see if I feel comfortable, if I can find myself here. And, uh, and the first days were a bit uh, not what I expected, but then it just went really great because I started to dance. I started to visit oh, cool. dance studio. Yeah. I love dancing. <laughs> it's my passion after nice. English. What else? Yeah, and I've got some friends there because of that dance community. Mm -hmm. I actually always struggling with finding, you know, my my kind of tribe. Mm -hmm. I can say so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds loud. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, in Lviv, I had this chance. That's so cool. I, I went to that dance studio, started to dance. And then I just got to make some friends, you know, connections. I felt really comfortable. And I and then I understood that the place actually it doesn't matter mm -hmm. people what really Absolutely. matters. Yeah. So going back to that and like the way that we bridge with people is, mm -hmm. again, communication, which I love that you and I like share that in common. Mm -hmm. And we share this thing with Kiev and Lviv. So for me, like living in Kiev, I lived there for three years and I was always learning Ukrainian and mm -hmm. this was all before war. So it was like kind of not the most popular thing. Um, and so I had a hard time actually making a lot of friends there and connecting mm -hmm. with a lot of people. And so moving to Lviv really helped. What language were you speaking in uh, Kiev and what mm -hmm. language were you speaking when you moved to Lviv? I used to speak Russian mm -hmm. for my whole life, I guess. But then, like a couple of years ago, when I um, it started actually earlier. So when I was in Kiev, I met some people, and uh, I've met uh, my soulmate. Mm -hmm. So and uh, my soulmate speaks uh, Ukrainian. Oh. Uh, but that was a thing, you know. Uh, interesting thing about. Um, language that mm -hmm. even though my soulmate, soulmate speaks Ukrainian uh, he kind of had to speak Russian speaking of business oh really yeah so if you're like working uh, if you have business so everybody just counted like Russian is just a language of business mm -hmm. so if you speak Russian it's like you are 
I don't know, very serious. You're just, you're not from the village. Yeah, exactly. That's what so. I always hear. Like my friends from village or even Mistechko, like small towns, when they move to the capital, it's like abandon Ukrainian or Surajik. Well, mm-hmm. Surajik, okay, maybe, but go to Russian to show that you are like more um, cosmopolitan, kind of like worldly mm-hmm. or more experienced. So where is your soulmate from, by the way? From the west part of Ukraine. Okay. So I was I was excited. I was excited to meet people from the west part of Ukraine because, as I said, living in Mykolaiv, for me, the whole Ukraine was a big, um, I don't know, a big uh, box. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a, a big box of uh, different, I don't know, cities, cultures. I didn't know what people like from the west part. Yeah, it's Ukraine, like a whole nother. You know? Did it have a reputation? Was it like... How was it from because it's geographically far from you like growing up does it have this mystery that you that you are really curious about and is or like a negative stereotype positive or just no, different No no it was just like positive I I don't know I didn't have those stereotypes uh, mm-hmm. to be honest really I just I just knew that there are people everywhere like all over Ukraine so when I went to Kiev and I've met people from different parts of Ukraine I understood how multicultural mm-hmm. Ukraine is, yeah. you know. Kiev is like melting pot, mm-hmm. is like, like New York. Right. Um, but um, melting pot, when I say that, I mean from different cities. From Mykolaiv, from Odessa, from Lviv, from Lutsk. And, uh, um, and I was just excited to meet people from different uh, cities. That's it. Because mostly, like Mykolaiv is, uh, how to say... Um, we don't have so many people mm-hmm. from like, I don't know, uh, from like Lviv Moving or there, like right. Vinnytsia, you know, I mean, I, don't, I didn't know such people, mm-hmm. but in Kiev you can meet those people and yeah. it's interesting every time to get into know just uh, people from Lutsk, people from Lviv and mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So you guys, when you met your soulmate, did yeah. you you guys were speaking in Russian together for the beginning of the? Yeah. Or did it rub off on you like Ukrainian? We spoke Russian because I spoke Russian, mm-hmm. and um, he also spoke Russian because of the work. Yeah. So as I mentioned before, I guess mm-hmm. yeah, I mentioned that before. So and then we just like I said. No, I don't remember how it started. We just decided, like, hey, let's speak Ukrainian. Yeah, still in Kiev, or were you guys in Lviv? At no, the time? in, in, in Kiev. Kiev. Yeah, That's we were cool. in Kiev. Like, hey, was that just... uncomfortable to start speaking Ukrainian yes, in Kiev? Yes, I felt so dumb. <laughs> That's I what my friends say that try so that dumb. can. Yeah, I thought that I can talk uh, only. You know, I thought that about serious things, I only can talk in Russian. You mm-hmm. know, and in Ukrainian, I can just say some I don't know basic things. Mm-hmm. You know, but if I'm talking about work. So I have to speak in Russian. Right. It for me it was very very difficult to switch, and I am um, uh, when I spoke Russian, I spoke like um, how to say faster. Yeah. Than in Ukrainian, so yeah, uh, it was it was hard. But then, it was just okay. You know, you mm-hmm. just you just get into used to it, and uh, then you just accept it as like that's something that should be. You know, this is your native language yeah. this is the la- na- language of your history of your country this is your own language you just have to understand that yeah yeah because like people i guess used to think about like russian is their own language but actually ukrainian is your native right. language original one and uh, then i moved to lviv so i wasn't mm, struggling with ukrainian so because mm-hmm. i i spoke you know before mm-hmm. and then in just in lviv i saw that people mostly spoke uh, speak ukrainian so that's why i felt comfortable i don't have to switch you know from ukrainian to russian right and um, and that it became just it just became my only one language so yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't try. I don't switch f- from Ukrainian to Russian when person speaks to me in Russian. Mm-hmm. What about with your family? Do you have to switch? Um, nope, nope. Uh, because we had the same situation. Uh, we they used to speak Russian as well, but then when I decided to switch to Ukrainian, they still spoke Russian. But then I guess the war kind of affected them as well. Mm-hmm. So even if they spoke, for example, my mom she speaks uh, Ukrainian. Uh, at work because mm-hmm. she's a lawyer yeah she speaks uh, ukrainian because of her work and uh, like a couple of years like a year and a half ago she started to speak ukrainian even on a daily basis mm-hmm. you know like with my 
father, my grandma. Okay, so yeah, for you, yeah. I mean, whenever I, I would have no idea you were from Mykolaiv, like watching your videos and everything, like yeah. I hear like really clean Ukrainian. I mean, as a foreigner, maybe I don't know it as well, but like I was always like very impressed with your Ukrainian, so. Thank you. Yeah, I, actually, I actually didn't know like where you were from. Always wondering. I mean, I receive comments from people under the video like, hey, where are you from? You have mm -hmm. nice accent. Maybe you are like from the west, west parts of Ukraine, mm -hmm. you know, you have this beautiful accent. And I say, I'm from Mykolaiv. And people just say like, oh, it's nice accent for a per girl from Mykolaiv, you know? Yeah, and I'm wow. just wondering why so? Like, <laughs> it's, it's our language. Translation of this podcast mm -hmm. name is like a drop of inspiration. And I think you've used language to really inspire a lot of people, like foreigners, me included. I was watching your videos before really? we oh met, right? Yeah, Thank that's you. funny. How um, are you so gifted? I would say you are like extremely talented because even your English is without a heavy accent of, and I, I've been, I teach English since COVID, so uh -huh. a lot with accent reduction and just what, mm -hmm. what is difficult. And when I speak with you, it's just like speaking with like a friend from my from America like it's crazy wow that's a high mark for me it you is know, like really 12 high points. I started thinking like should I say that I set the bar but I mean I have confidence because you are speaking really well so this is inspirational and like where did it come from from childhood or well first of all I just want to say pointed it out that I think that our Ukrainian accent is so sexy I mean we yeah, should keep it for sure I Be agree because like it's something that for example i do like french accent when they mm. say like hello no no way uh hello um un croissant <laughs> something like how are you yeah <laughs> so i i love french accent and i guess this is their like uh how to say it um not characteristic not like it's a trait specialty work specialty oh, yeah yeah it's like what they're known for I don't think they don't me yeah, maybe 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 actually why not so yeah I do like I do love their accent and yeah. I think this is something that represents that you are Ukrainian you see you I don't I, people don't change your accent no, I mean you can it. yeah you, you can work on it like just do not sound like hello how are you doing man what is going on there you see so just make it a bit softer but still don't get rid of it completely yeah. because I, I mean I still have an accent and, and I have it I, I know it but I love it mm -hmm. and uh, speaking of language well the thing is I've learned English on my own wow so no don't look that's at crazy. me that's <laughs> crazy that's really crazy though but um is it like watching a lot of friends episodes or something or no like... that's just old-fashioned um <laughs> i learned english on my own but i just wanted to again point it out i'm not gifted i'm not like a smart brain or something it took me like 10 years to become like to so you're like just persistent. sit here and have a podcast with you in that's english, crazy you see? yeah <laughs> and uh yeah I just had a goal. So for me, English wasn't like, it was never, it wasn't a goal. No, how to say it? No, it wasn't see, a goal? Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a, goal. a goal. It wasn't a goal. So it wasn't a goal. It was just um, a tool how I can achieve my goals. So you had other goals and then yeah. it was like just part of the way to achieving it. Exactly. So my, my uh, dream was just to go to the US mm -hmm. and I understood that I need to have this interview with the consul I guess and then I have to well I'd like to make some American friends you know and just to to communicate mm -hmm. you know not like just go there and just be afraid of people yeah. like just how to say go to the pigeonhole yeah pigeonhole yourself pigeonhole right? yourself okay so I guess we have to uh, teach people one. this yeah yeah I'll put it I'll put it in there. It, like, like <laughs> yeah. pigeonhole that means yeah I realized that I have this goal to go to the US and then what I did I just learned those first three basic uh, tenses which is past present and simple oh, past present past present and future mm -hmm. so I guess that, that's enough you know that, that's enough for just regular sure. conversation and then I just started to practice and practice 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 uh, I was sick of it but still I just practice practice practiced and then I started to, when I watched uh, movies so my next step was like watching movies mm -hmm. uh, I watched housewives desperate housewives <laughs> I watched like the big big Ben Theory. Big Bang Theory, yeah. Theory. And it's good because that actually helps you with understanding comedy and culture as well, I learned. Like so then you, you pick up on a lot of a lot more than just like 
language, I think, right? You, 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 that's very important you said because you really understand this like cultural difference mm -hmm. because you, you won't be scared when you go to the US and people just random person would say, hey, how are you doing, girl, for example? And you like just be scared. Maybe yeah, yeah. he's a scammer or something, you know, <laughs> murderer or I don't know. And he just getting used to this. And uh, I would say that really by learning language, I was trying to embracing this uh, like culture mm -hmm. so in in order to understand people there you see knowing what to talk to them about you know at least like hey I watched at least Desperate Housewives I don't know <laughs> a lot about America but at least I watched Housewives and we can talk about it you know and um, yeah and yeah that's that's actually how I did it then I go to went to the US it was uh, amazing time but horrible speaking of my English <laughs> <laughs> and I chose that profession I was like um, assistant assistant mm -hmm. assistant in a beach store oh wow you remember those I guess you know what I'm talking about yeah. those beach stores yeah like. yeah wait where, where were you you were in Florida I, I was in Pisma Beach. It was California. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> California. Nice. <laughs> uh, I was there and um, I worked as an assistant and I was scared of people. I really tried to hide <laughs> because I thought that the only thing I needed just to say, hey, there is a short. This is size small, medium, large, and it's like 20 bucks. Yeah. That's it. No, they, our I, stores are different, right? Like different. they expect you to like be really interacting with the customers. Yes. <laughs> and, and like and American, customers interact with you, I'm sure, asking right, you a lot of things. Right. And they like to talk, right? Yeah. You guys like to talk. Yeah, like, small talk, right? Small talks. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, what should I say? But <laughs> they usually ask me like where I'm from. And then, then I make, made some friends. Okay. They helped me with English a little bit. How and old were you? At I was time? like, it was my second course, so I was like 19. Wow, that's a good yeah. time to go. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it was scary, but I I'm really, sure. I really wanted to kind of uh, open up my mindset, you know, expand the horizons mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, and yeah, and that was nice. And then it was second time in the US. So I uh, came with uh, some experience, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, my English really kind of brushed up a little bit. So so then it was South Carolina and people there oh, speak, wow. uh, they speak very fast, right? They speak fast in South Carolina? Very I just know they have an accent, like a, a nice Southern accent. Um, but yeah, that would be difficult to understand. Th that was like difficult. And I worked also in the restaurant sphere. So I was like a server. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> when it's like rush time, you know, busy hours, you have to like, they, they just shout at you like, hey, take, pick up those plates. Like, hey, bring this, that to that one, to that yeah. person. And you just like doing it and uh, you're getting to um, like English very just fast. Like mm -hmm. you kind of have to. And that's, uh, it helped that me. That really helped you? Okay. Yeah. so. You have this well-rounded, uh, big toolbox full of language skills mm. at this point, or you're still developing it. You seem like a natural, because again, I've discovered you through YouTube, which I checked right. today, and you like, I think you're already like same amount of subscribers as me. Like, you're growing very quickly, actually, which is cool. But it's because you offer like really useful videos. You seem to have the. I think with YouTube. Um, success comes a lot with the person mm -hmm. I mean there's a lot of tricks with editing and all the things but like mm -hmm. if you have a, the right personality then people are drawn to that and I, I feel like that's a big trick in how you're growing so quickly Thank you. and yeah and have you always had that personality or um, you mentioned you would like to be a TV host I think yeah you do have the right kind of personality for that so is this like from childhood you were always so outgoing or I really put in my notes to ask you is it something that you do for is our first time meeting in person yes. so I don't know if it's like some people are way different behind the, like when they're not on uh, yes. YouTube or social yes. media than they are in person. They can be crumpy a little bit yeah, yeah. or just extra positive or something yeah 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 so are you the same person on YouTube as you are off how do you have uh, such an outgoing personality or it seems that way? I, I guess natural I mean uh, I'm just the only one person <laughs> I mean I guess it's just natural uh, the same person on YouTube the same person here I would say maybe a little bit just the best version of myself uh, speaking on, uh, of YouTube because I record videos when I really have this inspiration yeah and when I have this for example now I really I'm getting this inspiration from you and I'm just starting to feel more comfortable like mm -hmm. uh, comparing to the beginning of right, uh, right. the podcast it warms up a little yeah so I'm just just feeling very very comfortable and uh, when I'm feeling comfortable I just like I don't know 
you can create the best content yeah and express stuff. myself like completely yeah. uh when did you start your channels well i started it like oh my gosh uh five or four four or five years ago wait mm -hmm. uh t in 2019 i guess so okay. yeah I'm four so years bad ago. in math no, it's like four Sorry, years. <laughs> <laughs> I know because that's when I moved to, to Ukraine. Yeah. And yeah, I wonder when it was that I first saw your videos, but it was certainly before war even. And then now I see that it's taking off and hopefully after this, it'll even go more because I, I like I think a lot of people should watch your channel. Not only Ukrainians, you know, it's really relevant. And so, yeah, I'm actually very grateful for this podcast with you because I want I always wanted to have like I, I just thought to myself if I ever gonna have like podcast or something like that i would like to do it in english That's with cool. really like a person who speaks english because i would feel like really 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 comfortable and i guess this like podcast in english it's just a great opportunity also for ukrainians you know to like watch your videos and understand like wow american who learns ukrainian you mm -hmm. know and speaks ukrainian learns the culture embracing the culture and wow there is a ukrainian mm -hmm. who learns english yeah. also embracing american culture and it's like really great match it's re it's something that really people should observe right. it's a really healthy and good content Actually, yeah, I can't think of other content creators that I know who have bridged this like we are right now. Mm -hmm. We're making history right now. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. We, we have no, but it's serious. Like, that's really crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we filmed something for your channel not long ago. And then I was so serious, like, I'll go wherever you are to mm -hmm. film a podcast. And like, and I'm glad um, that we're doing this. So, so now let's talk about your channel, the DYU community club like yeah. where did this idea stem from um i know already a little bit but so the viewers can mm -hmm. know a little more and like where do you want to take this and is it like because it's so unique i think like this uh, building a community mm -hmm. um, yes it's, it's special so will you speak a little bit about it i have now different channels mm -hmm. and uh, my main channel i guess it's like mergali mm -hmm. um so where i just talk about uh, and about english and about communication in general in general about relationships about people you know community and uh, we also pop up some like social questions as well mm -hmm. so the recent videos was like cancel culture in ukraine right. government concept the concept of government wow you guys are yeah. discussing that yeah i've discussed i, I had this uh, just a pinch of inspiration and i'm that's like that's cool i have to it's like cool it. topics too it's not yeah. like something that you can find um Typically, and these are in Ukrainian. These yes, videos? those are in Ukrainian. Interesting thing, interesting, interesting fact. So when I started this um, YouTube hobby thing, um, I started it in Russian, and um, I couldn't have any success. Like wow. nothing. Like people were just you know subscribed, unsubscribed, and uh, it was just very, very slow. Mm -hmm. And um, things really changed when I started to speak in Ukrainian. Wow, that's cool. It's, that's a big sign. It's a big sign. And uh, it's like, it's just understanding who you are. You see, when people support you, when you speak Ukrainian, people support you, right? Oh my gosh, that's a great topic to discuss. You have nice, uh, I don't know, Ukrainian language. Uh, you just feel this support and inspiration just to keep going and really kind of spreading this language, spreading this, um, how, oh my gosh, uh, this... Uh, the specialty you said, right? Mm -hmm. the, the Spreading this um, authenticity. Of yeah, the I was language. about to say that though. Authenticity. Yes, authenticity of the language. I want the young generation really to understand that Ukrainian language is. Oh my gosh, it's just. Um, it's who you are. You see, it's who you are, and uh, sometimes people really just stuck and they think my gosh who am i where am i you know what i'm doing and everything but really starts with who you are and for me first it's like i'm ukrainian mm -hmm. and um, i speak ukrainian and that's right. it and language as we agree i think you yeah. can't really remove that from identity and culture like a lot of people right. try to or ignore it but it's just part of what makes a culture a culture. Back to authenticity, I think that's also why your channel is unique because you're truly passionate, like you're yeah. saying what you believe. Last week I was in Kyiv at a party and I met 
a guy with like a quarter million uh, subscribers and we were talking about YouTube and I was like, I have mm -hmm. like 4,000, I think, or something. And he's like, yeah, I have 250,000. And it was like, wow, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And then he was open that his channel was like in Russian um, and he's had it for years. Oh, and, okay. and then he told me like, yeah, but since war I changed and I actually lifted his channel and he still does it in Russian. So he just lied yeah. to me, but I could see why, because here I am a foreigner with a Ukrainian mm -hmm. channel and he, but you know, it's, even if he did change, like, I don't fault him for not changing, like, his mm -hmm. content. Like, I, I think he should, but he wouldn't be authentic anymore because right. I guess he's already developed it. This is what he's more comfortable with. So now he would feel, like, fake having to switch his content into Ukrainian. So I think it's, like, cool that you had done this already and have, mm -hmm. like, and you have this passion behind it because there's no hiding that, right? Uh, definitely. I, I absolutely agree with you. And... Um Speaking of that, uh, when I started to do channel in Ukrainian, I really um, grew my audience to like, I have like 3,000, 3,000 3, now, mm -hmm. which I'm really, really appreciate because it's like, oh my God, 3,000 people. Really, right. they're here to watch me, to listen to me like, what? So I'm, I'm really very grateful for it. Where's <laughs> the future of it? Do you have an idea of where you want to go with the channel or is it as it's growing, you just kind of let it take you so channel is just um, a great thing, you know, to talk to people and tell them who you are and what are you doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing now community, uh, which is actually, I guess, a bit new mm -hmm. for, for Ukrainians. We don't have this uh, culture of clubs, you know. Right, yeah. And I guess it's different in the U.S., right? I think the U.S. has a lot of different clubs and you can kind of figure out what's for you. And can you just like say a couple of words about why people in the US they're trying to you know um, bond with each other and create this like clubs and That's little communities around like interests right? yeah it's right? based around interests and I think it's because we as a country have people mm. from all over so like growing up I'm Filipino background but I grew up in Texas so there's like one other Filipino family in the city I'm mm. from so I couldn't just find the other person of the same background as me um, uh, then I would have a very limited friend group. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, what am I involved in? What do I like? And so clubs are even extracurricular activities. What you do outside of school, it was just from childhood very important to us. And then now with online life, like people form clubs and there's mm -hmm. like Twitch and different groups and everyone just finds that you can bond over this. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be just based on like where your family's from, for, for example. Because I think that that has a lot to do in a priv primitive state. Like, who am I going to hang out with? Like, uh, like here in... Poland, you can always just like stay, I guess, amongst Ukrainians mm -hmm. uh, because that feels natural and really comfortable. But you know, again, with language as a tool, you can brought into whatever other interests that you mm -hmm. have, and it doesn't have to be based on just where you're from or what language you speak. And so, I think America's done a, a cool job about mm -hmm. that, and I yeah. think that we formed that culture. And and I don't know about it in Ukraine so much, so I guess you would know more. I. I don't think that I know really more about that because uh, usually we just, I don't know, have, uh, you know, like activities, extra activities, like, um, I don't know, sport activities, you know, people are going on, I, I don't know, what, what, they're doing football, I don't know, playing football, they, they are playing basketball, they are just going to, um, I don't know, dance classes, you see, so, but it's like just extra activities, it's like how we just uh, do our hobbies, mm -hmm. you know, but this is not about communication, right. uh, and that's why, well, everything started with that I haven't had people who I'd like to, not like, who I'd like to, uh, I haven't had actually like-minded people okay. around me, so, and it was really hard to find like-minded people in my city, then I went uh, to went abroad and uh, thought maybe I'm gonna find like-minded like-minded people there, which was also kind of questionable because I found people who kind of have the same interests as me. Mm -hmm. You see, but uh, it's more like became like friends, you know, okay. just like friends, and you you can have like one or two friends who supports your interest, but I couldn't even imagine that you can have this community of like 5, 10, 20, 50 mm -hmm. people who actually just support those interests mm -hmm. and they're really passionate about and they'd like to share their own experience and they would like to learn your own experience as well. So the first thing, that the first my experience when I seen this community, it was expat. Oh yeah? 
I was in France and I couldn't speak any French. <laughs> I spoke just English and for me it was like two options or I just uh, learn French right. or I just try to find uh, like English speaking community. Yeah. Well, first one is very difficult, right? <laughs> it takes longer. <laughs> it right. takes longer. And then I was like, okay, I should find uh, like um, English speaking community. And then I found it on, on Facebook, I found expat group in uh, France, yeah. in, in the city and um, in the France, in the city, what I'm saying, in La Rochelle, it was city. Oh, okay. And um, I found their expat group and I was wondering, what is that? Mm -hmm. I thought maybe it's just like, I don't know, secta? What is that? Sec a sec sector? No, sec oh, sect? Sect, like a church, you know, yeah. like sect, right? <laughs> yeah. I thought that it's like sect or something. And uh, <laughs> But I just wrote the guys, uh, the, the main person who organized that expat uh, group. And I said, hey guys, what are you doing? Like... Mm, maybe I'd like to join, you know, mm -hmm. what, what do you have? And he said, like, we have so many people from different uh, parts of the world and we are just gathering sometimes to talk about something uh, we want, you mm -hmm. know, sharing our own story and everything. And I was like, sounds good. Do you do it in <laughs> English? They're like, yeah. So I'm like, I'm in. That's cool. That's cool. And I just, um, I just went there. It was my, like, first time when I really saw people, different people from different, different cultures, they speak different languages, but they are united, not only um, like around English, because they all speak English somehow. Right, that but was just like the common thing. Right? Yeah, that was a tool, yeah. right? So as I mentioned, a tool, but they were talking about, they, they were separated in different groups, mm -hmm. like, you know, and they were talking, one group was talking about, um, oh my gosh, we were talking about sponges. Sponges, <laughs> sponges in the ocean, yes. One guy, <laughs> he used to work as a, oh, I can't remember, he was like, I don't know, discovering, like diving. The, the diving, I don't know, no, he was like discovering the research in those sponges, like oh, understanding wow. how they function or something. And he, and it was like five people around him, we were just listening to his story and we were just really amazed. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's something, it was something different, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I never spoke about sponges, so. <laughs> and then another group was talking about uh, traveling in general, so yeah, like tips and tricks. Right. Yeah, another one was talking about French how to learn French and everything mm -hmm. so and they were just changing you know like yeah. one person go to another group another person go to that group and I was like oh my god <laughs> is that just really happening and I've tried all of those groups <laughs> and I really realized that oh my gosh communication is everything I yeah. felt myself much better uh, like I had felt myself like more isolated before right. that expat group but after that, I felt like, oh my, I, I can actually live here, you know, for yeah. some time. I can just find my own place. And that was the beginning of uh, that Do You Understand Club, which I uh, created. DYU is Do You Understand. Do You Understand. That's nice. the meaning, not like Do You Understand English. It <laughs> means like, Do You Understand Me? Yeah. Like, well, wow. so some common thing. Yes. That's cool. And there is a story behind this. <laughs> That's a great story, actually. Yeah, yeah I had no you. idea. So I think this is really cool, actually. This has been very fun to do. It's nice. <laughs> I feel really comfortable. We don't have this culture. Like, people don't understand why they should gather around their own interests, mm -hmm. you know? Like, mm, we are kind of a bit isolated from each other, you know? But mm, it, is, it is actually great to be among like-minded people, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, just feel like, no, mm, how to say, oh my, um, just being yourself, you yeah. know? Not trying to pretend. It's good when you have this support, mm -hmm. you see? Uh, you might not have friends, but you have your club members mm -hmm. who would support you, who would guide you, I don't know. And um, that was the beginning, I was like, wow, Maybe I can do that. Maybe I can create this club where I can, you know, organize people uh, in groups uh, around their interests. Mm -hmm. And English is just, you know, like a tool for us to talk about those interests. Mm -hmm. Because knowing English, you can actually talk about your passions with so many of people. You're not limited. Yeah. You're not limited just only like, oh, I know Ukrainian, so I'm going to speak only to Ukrainians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, you just know English. You can go to Poland, speak English there. You can go to France. Well, <laughs> to, that's <laughs> Some countries more than others. Mm. But yeah, you're right. It opens a door. And then from there, mm -hmm. it depends on your interests. And, like, and then you can really express yourself. So I think that that, yeah. that uh, importance that you're prioritizing is huge. And I think when more people realize it, they'll they'll embrace language and like if, even if it's just ukrainian switching to ukrainian because that'll mm -hmm. open a door in mm -hmm. ukraine so the first like started with uh english language mm -hmm. and then i was like 
we should implement Ukrainian yeah that's as cool. well because um, so many foreigners now they're learning like you're learning Ukrainian, right? Right. So, so many foreigners now, especially, they are interested in Ukrainian language. And I guess it's great because when foreigners are going to learn Ukrainian in fun, interesting way, you know, not like you're holding those books mm -hmm. and just uh, one teacher like staying at the board and like, hey, look, those are hundreds of rules you should remember. Yeah. <laughs> no, you just like talking. You're just trying to find what's what's like what touches you know yeah. its soul and uh, you just find this topic and like you pop it up and you just start conversation even if you have like basic really level mm -hmm. i mean you uh, have nice uh, you have like b1 level i guess b1, yeah? yeah but still i can talk to you i'm pretty sure i can talk to you about uh, things that usually people talk in b2 level b2 level right maybe. just just in a way because i will find some words yeah, like exactly. easy words that you will understand mm -hmm. i will find something that you have like your I, I would see that you ha you are passionate to talk mm -hmm. about it, you know? Yeah. Because for people, like, I'm experiencing this. I'm watching my club members. They don't fucking care about mistakes or something. Yeah. Grammar. They just talk. They like, I like this topic. I'm going to talk. Yeah. Like, whatever. You and forget about, like, oh, I don't want to have an accent or I don't yes. want to make a grammar error. No, it's like, I have an opinion and I want to share and yes. express yourself. Yes. And I am so grateful and I'm so, I don't know, honored <laughs> yeah. uh, when um, they just like my club members, they write me. I feel so comfortable when I kind of meet you guys there in the club. I feel it's like my own little family, you know, of like yeah. minded people. Mm -hmm. I feel a part of it. And uh, whenever I feel like upset or something, so I really come and I have this energy and I feel like I can do actually literally anything. I that's don't know. nice that's super inspirational it's super especially right now when people are really they mostly just mm, well they are anxious they are afraid of about their future mm -hmm. it affects their reality like their present and i just want to just take those people like from that and just like out and just put them in nice place where they can feel relaxed a little bit yeah. just forget about everything and just remember that they're just people who have their own interests, hobbies, opinion, passions, and just just to express it, you see? Yeah. It's, it's very, very important because I think these things actually unite people. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and it just, mm, and also it makes things easier about languages, right? <laughs> like It does, just, yeah. It's like two birds with one stone, what you're yeah. doing. Like you're helping people share their interests, express right. themselves, feel comfortable. I think that's very important. And then all the while they're improving whatever language it might be in. And that's like, I think that's great. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity to talk about it, to talk about the club, because as I mentioned before, people really, um, they don't understand completely, you see, what's the mission of the club, yeah, mm -hmm. how it's different, because they saw me like sharing some tips and tricks about English, they right. thought maybe it's like school or something, but I'm really, that's why I'm doing my YouTube channel as well, just to, to show in the personality, really personality that I'm a speaker, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm an owner of this Do You Understand Speaking Club, that I'm, and all the speakers So Do You Speaking Club, they are interested in people, interested in interesting people, you know, uh, people who have their own opinion about something and we are like here just to, you know, support you mm -hmm. in that. I know, I think it's cool, you'll have my support with that project in however, yes. however way. Similar with you, like my, I'm passionate about doing my content in Ukrainian because mm -hmm. it's interesting to me, mm -hmm. and so I don't know, and it's just a fun way of expressing myself. But to do something in English with you, as someone who speaks comfortably, mm -hmm. this is like really refreshing and less stressful for me, like super easy, just having a conversation. And uh, it's great that you can actually express your own personality because I know uh, how deep is your person, how deep is your personality, right? Yeah. And uh, because like you know. I've been watching you as well and I've been reading some news about that oh there is American who likes like those those like varenike our food and everything and I was like it can't be just that you know like person is deeper than that why you just represent only that part yeah and I am so happy that we did that uh, video yeah yes about cool. uh, Americans who learn English so I'm gonna have it on my channel I understand that sometimes in your own language you can really express more yeah absolutely. than just in foreign language 
I don't know, but for me right now, I can express myself more when I speak English. Yeah. I don't know. You just developed that, and it's became a part of your mm-hmm. English personality as well. Probably. And like, and that's I'm trying to do that as well with Ukrainian. That's why podcasts in Ukrainian is important to me because now I'm speaking on different topics. Mm-hmm. I'm developing more opinions about things, and uh, yeah, I appreciate you being a guest here on this. Thank like, you. I think this will be a very successful podcast. I want to share this with a lot of people because mm. i think you're uh, a more than just a drop of inspiration but you know like a whole heap Thank of inspiration you. i'm i'm trying you're as well i mean when you speak a ukrainian you know with uh, people who are just never spoke ukrainian uh, and they're thinking about maybe i should switch from russian to ukrainian and you are a great example of that like people from around like from all over the world they can learn language they can yeah. speak language and like it it shows like how people value your own language you yeah. see people from different countries they value your own language so it's it's actually great great example i think yeah. and uh, the last phrase i guess i don't i i was not prepared for this phrase you know like because <laughs> when i watch those i don't know podcasts or interviews or something like host can ask like what's the last thing you can recommend to people and i'm like oh my god what should i say right you know like, And yeah. the, those the funny moments when you are like doing some things, chores, I don't know, cleaning the house, and you're like thinking that you're um, having this inner your podcast, yeah. you know, and you're like answering some questions. Yeah, like, exactly. Okay, if that person gonna ask me that, so I'm gonna answer that. Yeah. <laughs> But I wasn't prepared for that. But <laughs> for, like I can say it in Ukrainian. One sure. phrase actually that I just um, come up with uh, that actually resonates with me a mm-hmm. lot. It's like, якщо ви не маєте друзів у власному місті. Це не означає, що ви не зможете знайти їх десь в іншому місці, або, можливо, вони говорять іншою мовою. And uh, do you speaking club community це якраз місто, 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 місце. Це місце, де ви можете знайти людей, з познайомитись з людьми з усього світу, з усіх куточків України, і, можливо, ці люди стануть для вас так само порцією енергії, натхнення і, можливо, навіть друзями. Тому що uh, we have in the club uh, members that actually became friends. I'm sure, right? After the club. They, yeah. That's, that's incredible. Yeah, there's a place for everyone. Yes. Marho is creating a, a community as well. And uh, yes. yeah, I'm very grateful that you're here. Um, thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you for inviting me. Share, yeah, I'm sure we do more in the future. So thank you all for watching. Thank you. As well, I'll put all her information in the description so you'll know where to find her. I'm a fan, uh, and thank you guys for watching. So, Slava Ukraini. Hello, I'm Slava. See you guys. <laughs> Bye-bye.